this is the fastest way I've found to get an API for Llama 70B up and running. Here we go in five clicks. Head on over to runpod.io or use the affiliate link in the description if you want to support the channel. Then click on login or sign up if you haven't got an account. Once you're logged in, you want to head over to the secure cloud section and you'll scroll down and I recommend here choosing uh, for price an A6000. So you'll just click on deploy and now you'll search for a template and find uh, Trellis Research Llama 70B. So here I'll just select it and click continue and deploy. And there are your five clicks. So we'll give it now just a few minutes for the model to load and the API endpoint will be ready and I'll show you how to use it. Okay, the GPU is ready. You can look at the logs to check out the progress. Just a few quick notes on the container. We're running with GPTQ. Big shout out to the bloke for quantizing the models. It allows us to fit on much less VRAM so we can fit Llama 70B on a single, on a single GPU. We are using X Llama kernels. This means that we're getting more efficiency with the inference, which is very nice. And we are all up and running. So the next step is to just copy the pod ID and we're ready to start making API calls. Let's head over to a terminal and I have this little script prepared. It's called testcurl.sh and it's simply a curl request to our API. And all I have to do here is swap out the run pod ID. So I put in the new pod ID and you can see this request is going to ask what is deep learning and it's going to have a maximum of 20 tokens. So let's save that request and run testcurl.sh. And we should get a response back from our API. It's not a streaming response. It should just be a one-off response. And here we have deep learning is a subset of machine learning that involves the use of artificial neural networks to model. So right away, you can see, you can immediately start making API calls. You can also do generate dash stream if you want to get a streaming response. Let's take this one step further and set up the chat interface. What I will do here is um, first git clone and I'll put in the address here, github.com hugging face chat UI dot git. So I'm cloning chat UI. And now that that's cloned, I will CD into chat UI. Now I need to set some environment variables. So what I'll do is um, touch dot env dot local and now open that up. So I'm setting environment variables, which I'm going to grab from a GitHub repo um, that you can purchase access to, or you can just write your own snippet as well. So I have a prepared snippet for Llama 70B that I'm going to copy in. Now, there's one other change that I need to make, which is here, I need to put in my pod ID. So I'm going to grab my pod ID um, rather from here. So here's the pod ID, paste in here. And just one other thing, it's an error that sometimes happens to me when pasting into um, nano displays, you can sometimes get an issue whereby new lines are created and that will uh, break the syntax. So you, you need to be careful that all of the lines are properly formatted, which they are right now. So I can control X to save and leave. And now I'll do npm install, which should install all of the necessary packages. And then I'll be run, ready to run the chat UI. npm run. Now, actually I need to start MongoDB. So I'm just going to head across. You do need a database to be able to start. Um, so I need this command here to run a Mongo database. That's running. And in fact, I already have that container available. So to restart, I'll just do Docker restart Mongo chat UI. So now I have Mongo running and then NPN, NPM run dev should get us up and running on port 5173. So here we are, port 5173. 
And here we have all of the chats that I previously set up. Um, and we're chatting with uh, Lama 70B. It is a big model, so it can take some time to generate the very first token. But once it gets going, it starts to speed up. And here we are generating uh, pretty quickly with a chat UI, uh, Lama 70B. As per usual, I'm going to give you a few pro tips. So first tip here is if you want to increase the inference speed, you can select to run uh, two or three or more of these GPUs in parallel. Uh, text generation inference, uh, shout out to Hugging Face, is able to handle multiple GPUs automatically. So that's beautiful. Roughly with an ACE 600 on Lama 70B, you'd get about five tokens a second, but it goes up to eight if you use two GPUs. And actually that ends up being cheaper than using an A100, which probably gives about five tokens a second, although I need to test more on shorter context length. The second tip I have is that you can run a long context model. And you can do this by searching for a different template by Trellis Research. It's the long context uh, Lama 2. Now, what this does is it uses Code Lama, which is trained to 16K, but still has all of the training that the original Lama does. It will actually allow you to get up to about 32K in context, but you definitely won't get the same accuracy once you move outside of the 16K range. Now, if you're running long context, you might want to use at least two GPUs because longer context will take up more VRAM. And by the way, this model here, the long context with short prompts, it will run at about 15 talks, 15 tokens per second. The inference software that's running under the hood in this approach is text generation inference. And that software allows you to make multiple requests to the API at the same time. In fact, language models running on GPUs are very effective in running with batches of inputs. That's because if you have one input, the GPU still needs to load all of the model weights through the compute unit once. But if you run a batch of inputs, the GPU still only needs to load once. So to some degree, you get the full batch of inference for free. If you want to get an approach like this to be as economic as using the OpenAI API, then the key is to send in large batches. Now, the limitation with sending in large batches is it's like sending in longer context length, and that will take up more of the KV cache within the GPU. The KV cache is required because you need to store a history of computations for earlier in the sequence so that you can keep generating new tokens later in the sequence. So as you have more batches or longer context length, you need a bigger KV cache, and that means you need to have larger GPUs. So what I'm saying here is that it's really good if you can send in batches of inputs or if you can just make many requests at once to your API, because that's going to get you a lot more throughput. But your limit is you need a larger KV cache, which means you need to have more space on your GPUs. So either send in lots of short prompts, or if you're sending in lots of longer prompts, then you'll need to run on multiple GPUs. So use two, three, four, five or more A6000s in order to fit the longer context or the larger batches. So why would you be doing inference like this on a GPU in the first place? Well, one of the key use cases is for data preparation if you're training your own models. According to the license for OpenAI, you're not allowed to use GPT 3.5 or 4 in order to train competitive models. So setting up an API like this allows you to run open source models that are more permissive when it comes to using them for training other models. Of course, this approach can also be helpful if you want to run your own model. And you can do that by taking one of the Trellis templates. And if you go in and simply swap out the model name for your model name on Hugging Face, you'll be able to quickly set up an API for your model too. If you'd like all the details of what was covered in today's video, you can purchase access to the Llama server setup repo by following a link in the description below. It includes a lot of detail around setting up a server from scratch with all of the install steps, and it covers re run pod setup that we did today. In particular, you'll get an overview of running Llama 70B, an overview of running long context, and also some tips on maximizing throughput through your models. That's it for the five-click setup. As usual, throw your comments down below.